Hello everyone and a warm welcome to you. This is Nancy Rebecca and you all may know me a lot from Intuitive Mind, which is an educational program educating about um, meditation, intuitive development, uh, kind of knowing what, what it feels like to be connected to your soul, remembering that you are a soul having a human experience. And so that's really been my role as a nurse healer for the past 20, 25 years. What you might not know about me is that in that time, I've also had a long running dream to create a nonprofit to get these tools in the hands of everyone. I mean, that is my dream. And so about four years ago, we did uh, create a nonprofit and called Soul Seeds. And at that time, uh, Melanie Davis-Jones, who she'll come on here in just a minute, uh, we asked her if she would be part of the board of directors. We had, she had worked intimately with us when we were creating our online programs to help get those developed. So we knew that we worked well together and knew she had this great passion. Now we brought her in. Uh, so she's been on the board this whole time. And now most recently has stepped into the role of executive director. So I'm going to turn this over to Melanie so she can tell a little bit about herself and uh, what really drew her to this work with Soul Seeds. So. Welcome, Melanie. Thanks for coming. Thank you. It's so good to be here. I appreciate getting the opportunity to talk about Soul Seeds, something we both love. Mm -hmm. So just a little bit about me. I grew up in New York. I graduated from Duke. I had a big career in ad agencies with big brands, but I realized because I was a workaholic that I really wanted to move into the nonprofit sector. And so I have about 20 years, gosh, this sounds so old, I have 20 years of nonprofit leadership uh, experience. And so the work with Soul Seeds truly touched my heart. Um, I'm, I'm trained in the intuitive mind techniques. I have, you know, I'm in the advanced alumni group. But I also love the idea of really connecting the tools with people who needed it most. And so I moved to Tacoma from Raleigh, North Carolina about a year ago. I told her kicking and screaming, but not really. <laughs> about the weather than anything else. Um, to really take both work more directly with my spiritual community, work on the board of Soul Seeds, it, you know, increase my own private practice with this work. So I'm really excited to be here to get to talk to a bit more about it. Yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, we had met first in North Carolina, and right away I knew in class, and we connected. That, that we definitely connected at that service heart level for sure. And but what drew you to do spiritual work to kind of incorporate that into the rest of your life? You know, my father died very suddenly of a cerebral aneurysm a few weeks before my thirtieth birthday. And it was in that I could still feel him around. There was still this sense of connectedness that I had no way to sort of process. And so I just started, you know, sort of exploring, did some meditation, did work with Sai Baba. You know, I did a number of things that, you know, helped me understand more of the spiritual realm. Mm. Yeah. And so then, yeah, you decided to explore and do meditation and things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, because one of the things uh, working with our spirit and and working with intuitive development, or you know, and working with psychic ability, in what ways have you found these tools to help you in life? To you know, whether it's to enhance or deepen your understanding of self or, or just navigate. Because one of the things I love about these tools is that they're practical uh, and that they have a practical application to, for me to all aspects of my life. Uh, but what was that for you? Yeah, I think for me, you know, the, there was also the thing that drew me to the classes was my mother had you know, a chronic illness, and I really sort of felt helpless. I didn't have background in healing and support. And so 
after she passed away, I really, it, it was when I found the intuitive mind work. I love the idea of connectedness. I love the idea of being able to not only do healing for myself, but mm -hmm. holding a healing space. Exactly. I mean, it's just such a powerful thing. Um, so I think that was the, the impetus for it. But what I found was that I could use it in sort of practical ways, as, as you said. You know, uh, if I was in a, in a meeting and you know, working with a large group of people, you know, I could feel the energy of the room and help it calm. But you know, Nancy, I was thinking about it and I, I would say I did it so naturally, I didn't even think about how much I I've been using it through the pandemic. You know, I spent a lot of time all by myself yes. uh, through these past few months. But, you know, and I'm hearing my friends talk about being stressed or, you know, really being overtaxed or, you know, really feeling, you know, anxiety levels going up incredibly high. And I was like, hmm, I'm not really feeling that. And I am, you know, I'm very disciplined in my, my practice in the morning and evening and around the meditation, but also using the techniques and really feeling grounded and really feeling centers, centered and also really kind of feeling into my body. You know, I think that's the other piece. We talk about spirituality and um, meditation and the energy, yeah. but so much of this work is also about the awareness of our bodies and how that's interconnected. Yeah. So Say those were some of the most powerful tools tools that I've had. I use them in business, but even more so on a personal side. Yeah, yeah, and really, I mean, it is such a great time of you know a change. There's a lot of turmoil, you know, even with our political and economic kind of ups and downs, and so that kind of emotional stability it just kind of smooths things out. I mean, there's definitely. Um, you know, that, that connection to the soul, I think, is the most important aspect of soul seeds and, and do feel that's really missing in the world. Uh, but I know that, you know, when we asked for you to be on the board and, and we, we talked about, you know, one of the things, you know, why don't you get it into communities like um, uh, with Child Protective Services, for example, that came about having a dear friend who, uh, as a staff person, she would, you know, call me once in a while, we kind of talk and she would just talk about feeling worn out at the end of the day or not quite knowing what to do. So she just kind of working with her on the tools just to help her to settle. But when we were kind of talking about it, it was, you know, when it was getting it with veterans and with the prison systems, but you had had a kind of a deep desire based on your work in nonprofits before where you really saw where some of these tools could apply. So can you share a little bit about that background? Oh, absolutely. Um, and that was more through my volunteer work. For more than 15 years, I worked with a very small grassroots organization that helped uh, and supported uh, people with HIV AIDS who were at or below the poverty level. So through that work, I really got to see how incredibly vulnerable people were. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, that may sound like I was a little out of touch and I, I really was, you know, I, I lived my life, but when I saw what they went through, a lack of access to housing and lack of access to medication and how vulnerable they were. But what they talked a lot about was, you know, a sense of feeling invisible Mm -hmm. a sense of a loss of hope. Uh, you talked about, you know, being disconnected from their souls. You know, they wouldn't have necessarily used exactly that phrasing, but they talk so much about being disconnected. Mm -hmm. And that was a really powerful thing to me to think about as we began to talk about the work of soul seeds, how do we start to make those connections? How yeah. do we bring in that sense of hope? How do we reconnect people to, you know, where their healing power comes from? You know, that internal uh, sensibility that can really drive it forward. I would also say, you know, as a woman of color, you know, part of this work for me was also about, you know, the ability to connect with my ancestors. Hmm. And really, you know, I didn't know my lineage. I didn't know the generations before me. 
And the thought that this work and the knowledge that this work, you know, is not only helping to heal me, but my family and other generations is incredibly powerful. And that's something that um, they also talked about in, in the group, it was called Source Force. You know, a lot of them were having to face their mortality. They were like, oh, you know, yeah. I, I, of course. Yeah. You know, and I may not live to see the legacy of that. And, and so that sense of, you know, broadening and help pe helping people feel into that connection and have a sense of um, pur purpose, I would say, mm -hmm. but more importantly, the sense of not being alone. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a lot of what they talked about as well. So when I think about the populations that we're talking about serving with soul seeds, that really feels like that very natural alignment because it also feels like the gift of hope. And I would say, at, you know, with Source Force, that's what we talked about a lot of the time, giving them hope, letting them know they're not alone, letting them know that we're here and we're being supportive. Mm -hmm. I feel that same kind of energy and power around what we're um, creating with soul seeds. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and what soul seeds is about and these techniques is is that internal referencing of knowing that they have all the answers inside of them. And I know you and I have talked about this a lot. And that's I know you've talked about how important that was because we were there there isn't anything about teaching you about a certain culture or religion or way of believing like it applies to anything it's just that uh, people can incorporate it into all of who they are and how they believe but it's about that internal referencing through meditation and then having the experience of hope uh being able to tap into that and so you really talked a lot, you know, about, you know, this work and why it's important to you. But, but what's your sense about why is it so important now? Like, because you and I have talked about how we feel like we need to kind of push up the timeline that we, it had been a little delayed because of the pandemic, but so we thought, well, we'll just wait till it's over. And then realizing, oh, no, no, we need to push up the timeline again. Yeah. So, exactly. uh, Yes. And what we always talk about, you know, what you what I tease you about, and I do think that this is the power of that work of, you know, in class, Nancy would always say, get your own answers. We'd say like, Nancy, what about this? And they're like, hmm, that's a curious question. That's good. Why don't you check in with your spirit? <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm laughing about it, but it really is such a powerful tool. And it's a powerful gift to give someone. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of the why it's important at this time. I mean, realistically, you know, amid the pandemic, we keep saying they're unprecedented times. Well, they are, you know, and what's unprecedented about unprecedented about it is that is global collective pain. You know, I my yes. I worked in disaster philanthropy. Usually, when a disaster hits, it's in one place or a region or a country. It's global, and that's what's different about this. Uh, that's why it's tough. Wouldn't yeah. you? Wouldn't you say? And I also think what was notable to me too was that there were finally conversations about stressors and anxiety and mental health and things that had been you know sort of kept quiet mm -hmm. are now in the fore you know and now we're talking about the impacts of high stress we're talking about what it's going to take for us to heal collectively you know and we've talked about it and we believe it's going to take both traditional but also non-traditional approaches yeah that's what soul seeds is about in order to move us forward, help us heal, help us heal as a collective. Mm -hmm. And I love the, you know, healing with humanity yeah. um, backline of, of soul seeds. Yeah. Because it really does have that double meaning of that we, you know, kind of heal with humanity and compassion and love. But it also means that we're healing with the collective. Yeah. And I think that's also the power of the work and the time is now for that. Yes. <clears throat> I remember uh, four years ago as we were meeting as a board 
and we were kind of uh, kind of ironing out some of this terminology and it that kind of uh, unity consciousness and all that kind of felt so out there and yet soul seeds was calling us to really use that languaging and we just thought people are not going to take us very seriously if we use that languaging and yet now it just seems so appropriate. Uh, and so when we're talking about working with uh, end meditation, working with energy, our intuitive understanding, our gut instinct, understanding our uh, being, uh, finding our answers by letting our heart lead us, uh, letting us have you know clarity, those are the things that are learned through this. But what would you say is one of the biggest misconceptions around energy work these days? <laughs> that it's fake, that it's <laughs> not real, that none of us can actually do anything. And any of us who actually do are kind of kooky and out there and, you know, just, just weird. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I love the idea of being able to normalize that. You and I have talked about that before, you know, yeah. how to normalize the idea of energy work and the idea of psychic is not some weird, you know, thing, but really quite powerful tools uh, for self-healing and for, you know, bringing more compassion and love into the world. That's a pretty powerful thing. Yeah, yeah. I was remembering uh, the day when we went to the Veterans Community Center. Uh, you had organized that meeting and we went in, we were provided just a very short period of time. And I think it was an anger management. Yes. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And uh, I think, I think tops, we were given 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, and so to try to explain and, and, but they were very open and they were very receptive. Mm -hmm. And just in about a 15 minute meditation, they had some profound experiences. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know I was quite moved by that. Oh, absolutely. I was too. I mean, neither one of us is very emotional and we were both sort of sitting there going, oh gosh, you know. Wow. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, on the ride home, we were talking about, you know, this is what I feel my heart is calling me to do. You know, this is how trans formative yes. and transformational this can be in people's lives. So yes. you think about, you know, 15 minutes yeah. and the way they felt in the room before the meditation that you did and the way they felt after, you know, and, and they all spoke to it in their own ways. That was what was powerful to me. Yeah. That, you know, that was the thing of saying with a limited amount of time, we can still have this incredible impact. Yes. Um, and I think that is the power of this work. Yeah, and that's the and that that's the beauty of how it's taught, how it's shared as well, is that they have their experience. They allow their own kind of soul soul connection with themselves uh, to teach them, to guide them, to lead them, to help help them to re-remember that they are not just a human, you know, they're they are a soul having a human experience. So uh, as director, executive director, I'm so excited that you uh, uh, have stepped into that role and that things are really, I can feel, are already starting to move forward. So what excites you about Soul Seeds and where Soul Seeds is going, even like in the next three months, six months, year? What excites you about that? You know, everything excites me about it. It, it really does, really. Everything excites me about it because I've had such an incredible experience with this work uh, personally, but also I've seen it in clients that I work with. We saw it at the Veterans Center. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when one of the men said, you know, I connected with my soul and I felt like I had just, you know, met my best friend. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> so hearing that, was like, wow, okay, we have to figure out how to do this. Yes. So I think it's just, you know, what excites me about it is bringing these tools forward to people who might not have them otherwise. You know, I think that's the power of it. I mean, in many ways, the word mindfulness, you know, that's really come to the fore. And, you know, it's always, you know, this person in a yoga yes. pose. 
you know, in a beautiful spa somewhere. <laughs> and we don't have that. And most people don't have that. Yeah. Yet, as we talked about, it is within each of us. Yeah. We have the ability to do that. And so bringing that to, particularly in underrepresented communities, is, it just feels so incredibly powerful for their own healings, but also for healing communities and healing our world. I mean, it just feels, I feel the bigness in it. And I don't mean that from an egotistical standpoint yeah. at all. I mean that in like a heart opening, you know, love is yeah. my <laughs> big thing. My bracelet says, choose love. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's the Leo in me, what can I say? Um, but it is that, that sense of activating your self-love. Yes. You're getting, you know, you're putting out love energy to the world. And when we think about how are we going to get to the other side of the challenges of 2020, you know, I think that's the answer. And I think that Soul Seeds is a vital part. Yeah. Yeah. Happen. Yeah. And just feeling better. Uh, you know me, we're always talking, that's that, <clears throat> between the two of us, it's like, well, let's, let's just get feeling better, and then we'll yeah. feel like we can love again, you know, yeah. but let, let's get, let's get feeling better, mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, so there's lots of exciting things, and I know that the Soul Seeds website can really explain the mission more, and some of the programs more, and things like that, but mm -hmm. uh, how can people get involved uh, that might watch this video or look at the website and and it's like I, I want to be a part in some way uh, okay how can they do that well you know every nonprofit is going to start with donate um, you know we are a new nonprofit and so you know fundraising is our biggest challenge at the moment you know and even if you can do ten dollars or ten dollars you know, recurring $10 or $5, that would be an amazing help. But I also recognize, you know, it's challenging times for so many of us. So if you can't donate, then share this video. Yeah. Um, share our, like our Facebook page, go to the website and sign up for our newsletter because yeah. you get yeah. to hear all the things that we're doing. I would say too, you know, talk about this work talk about, hey, I saw Nancy and Melanie, they seem pretty normal. <laughs> we can normalize this work and normalize this idea that, you know, we can have powerful experiences, powerful expressions of love and compassion. Um, so I think talk about it and bring it out into the open and, and share your own experiences. We'd love to see you share it on, on Facebook or my, um, my email is melanie at soulseeds.org. So if you have ideas of how Perfect. we in this work, one of the things that I, I should have said was we really are looking to make this scalable so that you, we can bring it into different communities where our alumni are, but also broader into, you know, across the country, across Absolutely. the world. That's our vision for Soul Seeds. Yes. So whatever, even if you hold that vision, it's Exactly. Just know that you're really helping us and you'll help us move it forward. Yeah. Yeah. Just visioning with us that dream of that every household, you know, at least knows the tools on how to ground. You know, that's, that's always been my dream. At least everyone at every household in the world knows how to, how to ground their spirit and their soul into their body and, and have that relationship again. So, yeah. Anything else that you want to say before we close up here? No, I think, uh, I think I've think i said a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that we're going to have lots and lots more to talk about. And definitely as we get Soul Seeds out there and get the tools, uh, again, if you know anybody, any kind of communities uh, that you are thinking that you might want to kind of create, cultivate a partnership with, uh, with us. Uh, again, it's Melanie at soulseeds.org. You can reach out to her. Um, so we're definitely in that kind of, uh, we're almost ready to go, just really pulling together a few, um, a few more things, but we definitely, this has been something we've been working on for four years now. So we're, we're ready at a soul level. We're definitely ready.
Yeah. So it's thanks again, Melanie, so much for getting on the video. I know you came kicking and screaming a little <laughs> bit on this one too. Uh, but hey, if I can do it, you could do it. So yeah, it, it was nice to be able to share it with people. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. All right. Thanks again, Melanie. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh.